Chris Middleton. Giannis trailing the lob. Oh! Run, two on one. Green the finish. Wow, the alley oop. Turned the corner. Inside! He made Yusuf Nurkic a screen saver. Here comes Murray. Alley up to Gordon. Oh, what a play! All right, everybody, welcome into the Alley Oop. I'm your host, Ryan Blackburn. Thank you so much for tuning into this podcast, whether you're on the YouTube side or the audio side. Please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, uh, and make sure to give a nice rating and review if you're if you're listening to the episodes. I've got a very special one here. Uh, I'm recording next to my brother, Ross Blackburn. He uh, He is a basketball fan. He's a Nuggets fan. We live together. We have a good time. And it has been a joy to be able to do this job and then to be able to also talk to Ross on the side about all these hoops. So, Ross, uh, thank you so much for hopping in. We'll we'll try to make this an annual thing, okay? Yeah, absolutely. We can certainly get going before the start of each season. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Looking forward to being on the pod. We're going to talk about the season kind of coming up, see what happens. For posterity's sake, we already just recorded something with 10 minutes of dead audio, so... It's it's life is good. Life is really good right now. We're uh, we're trying to make it work, but I'm uh, still trying to figure out this setup and then figure out this whole podcasting thing after doing it for several years. But is what it is. We're going to we're going to go through. We're going to we're going to do it live, as, as uh, my friend Brendan Vogt will say. Um, you went to U- uh, UCLA. I went to South Carolina. We both have been in sports for a long time. You decided to go a different direction with your profession, but like you're still a big sports nut, correct? Absolutely. <laughs> been a been a sports fan all my life. I mean, come on. Yeah, you're wearing whole family. You're has. you're wearing a Christian McCaffrey jersey right now. We're watching the second half of 49ers Vikings right now on Monday Night Football. And and we're just gonna have a nice, fun NBA conversation. And uh, but you've been you've been tracking the NBA. You're not just a football fan. And even though you're wearing a Christian McCaffrey jersey, uh, you are Jokic like, jerseys for tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, come that's, on. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, but no, hey, it's uh, it's been a good time. And obviously we're based out here in Denver. So we've got a definite like Nuggets point, like point bias kind of thing. I cover the Nuggets. So like that's going to be a thing. But uh, Ross follows the NBA. You, you follow the entire league, and it is not just about the Nuggets. You like to make bets on all these teams. <laughs> Absolutely. I've been a Nuggets fan for quite some time now. Started off when I was growing up watching Carmelo Anthony and Chauncey Phillips do their thing, watching J.R. Smith be awesome. And that lulled for a little while while the Nuggets were a little bit lackluster, so to speak. Sure. But... <laughs> My enthusiasm for this team really was invigorated when Ryan started doing Nuggets coverage again. And that was that was in about 2014. He started writing and podcasting. And since then he made the he made the pick for Jamal Murray, wanting to draft Jamal <laughs> back before before he was even a name. I think the Nuggets consulted me on that one. That well, was they if, might. that's that's what I remember about that. But you were you were very interested in that pick and very confident in his ability to be uh to be a guy going forward. Yeah. And here we are. Now, I remember <laughs> that that actually takes me back because do you remember the the first time that we went to watch the NBA draft together? It was the 2015 draft. Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> we got to watch Emmanuel Moutier be selected for the Nuggets at seventh overall. We were both pretty excited about that. We were at the time. That was that was a uh, that was a good moment at that point, and uh, obviously didn't work out well. But things worked out for the Nuggets in the end. But uh, uh, we're we're just we're chilling. We're having a good time, and uh, it was good of you to be on this show with me. Uh, thank you for doing this. I. I think this could be a good idea for like an, an annual kickoff episode for the NBA season. And maybe this is, I mean, this is how I, like it's my show. I get to do what I want. So like, it's perfectly fine. Fair enough. I'm yeah. looking forward to it as well. Thank you for having me on and you know, let's get to talking about basketball. Let's do it. Uh, let's first chat about Giannis, the extension that he had. Uh, this came out earlier today. Giannis, this is, I mean, this is a big deal. This is the second best player in the NBA right now. Like, Three-year, $186 million extension. And paired pairing that with the trade Dame to the Bucks, Damian Lillard to the Bucks, like both of those things obviously go hand in hand. I don't think Giannis extends without Dame. But it is pretty cool 
it's definitely pretty cool to see that happen. And I, I, I called them in a previous recording of this, I called them Nuggets East, the Nuggets of the Eastern Conference, because hey, they, they won a championship. They built around a singular superstar and then have some good pieces around that. And like, I think there's there's reason to be excited, especially if you're a Bucks fan. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. The Bucks were a mid-market team at best before Giannis came in and really changed the game for them. He had a good supporting cast. I mean, obviously, Drew Holiday and um, Chris Middleton probably both going to go down as Hall of Famers at the end of the day. They've had great careers. They have their ring. And it's a good question. That's I, I think Chris Middleton's like right on that border. I think Drew probably will, but Middleton I think probably peaked as a better player, especially on that 2021 run. But he didn't have a ton of time there. That's definitely true. We'll I guess we'll leave it to be determined. Yeah, it's just, uh, could, job's not finished. Like he, he could be an All Star this year. Like who knows? Of course. So, but Giannis really did his part in getting the Bucks on the map, and they are absolutely one of the most talked about teams. If you discount the bad teams in Los Angeles, I mean, it's, it's the Bucks, it's the Celtics. You can go on. Yeah. So and there's, there's a lot of teams for sure. Uh, there's a, there's a lot, there's a lot to be excited about if you're a Bucks fan. Like I, I think that they are tremendous. Uh, we're just watching it right now. Fred Warner, just Superman jumped over the, <laughs> over the offensive line. What was an epic play. Um, yeah. It's uh, kind of, kind of cool to watch, but, uh, no, there's, there's, what was that? Okay, never mind. Um, let's get into the basketball. Let's get into other stuff. Like the honest extension is a big deal. They're going to be championship contenders for a long time. Absolutely. At, at least the next like three years, I would say. Like you could definitely, you could definitely say for sure. Uh, beyond that, who knows? But like, I mean, Dame's still going to be great. Giannis will be great. Their guys are old, but is what it is. No, he has a great supporting cast. And Giannis is a, a phenomenal player, obviously. Number two in the world. It's hard to beat that. And also, it's Dame time. Yeah. So this team is going to be really scary come the playoffs. I think we're going to talk about that a little bit later in the later in the episode. And kind of what we see going forward for the Bucks, But it's their time again, potentially. We will see. We will see what happens. But uh, let's now get into MVP picks. You shared with me... Uh, a, an interesting MVP pick that I wanted to kind of uh, discuss a little bit because there's a lot, I think, to talk about with this particular team in general. The Dallas Mavericks and Luka Doncic. Like, yes, that's going to be your pick this year? That is going to be my pick this year. It's wow. a little bit of a risky one, admittedly. It's not It's not the safe bet. Well, the, the funny thing is like, he was the leading like like odds guy over each of the last three seasons. Yeah. Which that, I mean, he didn't win, obviously, but like, it's bound to happen at some point, right? You would think so. I mean, he's good enough. He's certainly reaching his prime if he has reached it yet. Who knows how high he could go? Yeah. But he's a great player. I think it it would be hard to debate that he isn't a top five player in the country. And he really does have that potential this season. So Luca's my pick because I see him putting up absolutely gaudy numbers and potentially rising the Mavericks all the way to a six seed and making the playoffs straight up, avoid the play-in games. If he brought them to seven, no matter how good the numbers are, that probably isn't good enough to win an MVP. But I can see him almost single-handedly bringing them up into the playoffs and earning the recognition as such. Jokic finishes second. Yeah, that's a good point. And like, probably the most important thing when you're when you're talking about something like this is avoiding that play-in. And, and making sure that the team is good enough. I think that everybody kind of understands that the, the Mavericks aren't going to be this powerhouse. Like they're not built for that. They're, they're built for maybe the plane. And, and if they get into the plane, then that's expected. If they rise above that, then maybe that's a good MVP case. So, I mean, it could be very similar to Jokic in 2022, where six seed for basically the entire season, you ultimately avoid the play in, but it's the gaudy numbers that really get you. Uh, and I think you, you mentioned that on a previous recording. 30, 10, and 10, something like that. That seems like a like that could be very reasonable for, for this year for Luka. It really could be. Obviously, Kyrie takes some of those touches away from him. But 30, 10, and 10, big 30-point triple-double could be attainable for Luka to average. And if he does that and sneaks them into the playoffs, I think there's little doubt that he would actually win the MVP. 
That'd be wild. <laughs> That'd be so wild. But hey, I mean, who knows? Maybe it happens, and and we'll uh, we'll have to diagnose that for sure. Uh, other guys, like I think, if I had to pick an MVP right now, I would probably pick Jokic because I do think that Denver's going to be the top seed in the West. Or well, actually, no, I, I didn't actually pick that. I picked the Suns to be the top seed in the West, which actually is a big distinction there. Um, okay, no, I won't pick Jokic. I I'll pick Tatum. Not Tatum. I'll pick Tatum. What if they win 60 games? Oh, I think they will might. Yeah, and if that's the case, then yes, other guys are going to get credit for it. Yes, other guys, like they, they have a stacked roster, let's be clear. But if you're picking a team like the Nuggets to beat the Celtics in the NBA Finals or a team like the Bucks to beat the, Sec- the Celtics in the Eastern Conference Finals, then the talent gap probably isn't that distinct. So like, what separates them if they're getting 60 wins is, I think, a fair question. Tatum is going to play a lot. He's a pretty healthy player for most of the time, and he just keeps getting better. And, and now they're going to ask him to do more and more. Although maybe Drew Holiday kind of takes some pressure off of him and, and they actually don't go that direction. Is that kind of the argument against it? Well, I'm not entirely sure. Drew Holiday could certainly contribute to that, but I don't see the Celtics as having an individual guy. And obviously Tatum's the superstar. Jalen Brown, uh, Brown is his second in command. But I don't see the Celtics, as it turns out, being all that much worse if Tatum doesn't play. And that's, okay. that's how I would often like to look at an MVP race is on the court, off the court. And we all know that the biggest disparity comes with the Nuggets and Jokic. When Jokic is on the court, they're the best team in the NBA, as evidenced by last year. Yeah. When Jokic is off the court, they're the worst team in the NBA. It's like LeBron for 10 consecutive years or so. Yeah, that's a it's a great point. So, <laughs> right. what about what about Steph? What if what if they were to avoid the play in? What if they were to push up the standings and like you don't have Jordan Poole, you have Chris Paul maybe, but like it becomes pretty clear that Steph could actually like lead that team to a high seed. He's absolutely the leader of that team. He's capable of scoring a lot and managing a game, coming in clutch during the regular season at least. I don't see it. Hmm. I don't see him putting up the numbers. I don't see him being accoladed enough, bringing the Warriors high enough in the Western Conference standings to really be in that in that conversation. So yeah. maybe he is. Maybe he ends up being a top five candidate, but I do not see Steph winning. Yeah, the number like the the volume numbers aren't generally going to be as good, like with the rebounding and assisting and things like that. So that's a that's definitely a difference. Maybe it is just going to be Jokic. What about Embiid? Not going to happen. <laughs> you don't think, feel like the voters are going to give him the benefit of the doubt? I Yeah, the voters probably won't give him the benefit of the doubt this season. <laughs> Embiid's an incredible basketball player. He's very talented. He's one of the best offensive guys that we've seen in, in at least a couple of decades. But there is quite a lot of dissension in the 76ers organization at the moment. And... It's really easy to eat into a locker room when there's off the court drama. Yeah. And if that's there's fair. a team that's full of off the court drama right now, it is absolutely James Harden. So <laughs> he's James a, Harden being he is the, team the, the, the cap team. the captain of the team of like the drama team. So absolutely. Yeah, maybe it is just gonna be Jokic though. Like that's it's it's a fair case. And if the Nuggets are the top seed in the West, like there's it's hard to argue with that most years. It certainly would be. You know, Tatum leading the Celtics to 60 wins, Jokic leading the Nuggets to maybe, oh, there Christian goes. He is really good at football. Touchdown. Touchdown, Christian McCaffrey. Hell yeah. Um, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> maybe Jokic leads the Nuggets to 55 wins or so and really does have Jokic-esque numbers, which are always breaking records. I do actually have a dark horse which I don't think it's going to win, but I think might have the potential to sneak into the conversation, which is actually SGA. Okay, I was going to ask, like, hey, it, it does seem like the Thunder specifically, like, if, if they were to break out and have 50 wins, for example. Wouldn't like, it be surprising in the slightest. That's, see, that's crazy. Like, after so long for them to not necessarily, like, play that well and then to be tanking for a couple of those years, but it felt like they were taking tanking for half a decade. 
Um, I mean, SGA would be, uh, he's fantastic. There's, there's no doubt about it. I, uh, that's a good sleeper. That's a, that's a good sleeper. What about Booker? What about Booker? I, I don't see the Suns being that one-sided in this season going forward. And Devin Booker is kind of like Jamal Murray or maybe even Donovan Mitchell in terms of being a playoff riser. They are absolutely incredible in the playoffs. I mean, I want the ball in Jamal Murray's hands. I want it in Devin Booker's hands. Yeah, fair. I want it in Dame's hands. Yeah. They're not necessarily regular season guys. And Booker's going to be great. He's going to lead the Suns along with Kevin Durant to probably a really good record, probably a one or a two seed in the West. I don't see the numbers by themselves being impressive enough to to merit a, an MVP vote. You think Beal kind of takes away from some of those totals? At least during the regular season, yeah. Yeah. It's easier to kind of piece together five points from a guy here, ten points from a guy here in a regular season rotation because, like, you're, you're always going to try to work in other people. And for those stars, like, they're – they're always going to try to offload some of that stress because they know they're going to have to carry such a heavy burden in the playoffs. So I could definitely see that. Although with SGA, like, I mean, they've, they've also got some other guys, Chet Holmgren, like he's going to step up as well. Hopefully he'll be really good. Yeah. Jalen Williams, Josh Giddy, like they've got some talent too. So who knows, but I mean, maybe it's just going to be Jokic. (laughs) We'll find out. (laughs) Um, Some good, good stuff. The Thunder certainly do have a lot of talent. The expectations for the Thunder are a lot lower. Yeah, and that's where maybe it really does make the difference. If if SGA has similar kinds of numbers to, we'll call it Steph, he probably gets the nod over Steph at least because nobody has the expectation that the Thunder is going to finish as the four seed in the West. And if they were to get that high, he's right there in the middle of the conversation. Any other guys that you think we missed out on that we should talk about? In terms of the MVP, I guess race. Giannis we should probably mention. I guess we should mention yeah, Giannis. Probably. He's kind of <laughs> he's kind of gone under the radar. Definitely not well, the favorite or one of the favorites. One of the reasons why he's fallen off a little bit is because the game's played of late. Like yes. he's he's been in the sixties for pretty much each of the last three seasons or so. Maybe he pushes higher this year because they don't want to load manage uh most guys and, and that's that's one of the player participation policies that they have. Mm-hmm. So Maybe he's a guy that if he's playing 70 games, then like the impact is is just tremendous at that point. So I don't know. What do you, what do you think? It's definitely an interesting question. Um, last year, we saw the MVP go to Embiid, who played the fewest games of any MVP in the last 20 <laughs> seasons or so. I don't remember what the number was. That, that's the load so, management era. I don't exactly. think it was like a bad... No, it's nothing against Embiid. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. That's exactly where I was going to go. Yeah. It's, we're starting to see a different era in the NBA with load management, with games sat intentionally, and it's possible the voters start to recognize that and don't discount games played quite as heavily. So if Giannis gets to 65 or gets to 68, that might not be a bad thing yeah, and then, so as compared one, to getting to 7. Yeah, that, that, and that's a good stipulation there because 65 is the, the cutoff for the awards this year. So like you can't vote on somebody – for an all NBA award, for an MVP award, for anything like that, if they don't have that threshold. So it's going to cut off a lot of people. Like if, if they can't make it, then it's going to be tough. But I, I think that Giannis is going to be somebody that I think is going to try to do that, especially this year with Damian Lillard. Like they're going to want to get as much chemistry as possible. So it's a good, it's a good thought. It's a good question. Um, all right. Why don't we transition now to best teams? Um, I'm curious, like, if you had to pick a team for the top regular season record, like who's going to kill it in the, in the NBA this year? It has to be the Celtics. Yeah. And I know that's everybody's favorite, so it's not a surprise coming out of my mouth, but what expert Ross, come on. (laughs) Well, yeah, maybe (laughs) the Celtics have a really, really good roster. And between them, the Suns and the Bucks, one of those has the best starting five in the league. It's just a lot of depth. And there's Did you mention the Nuggets depth. in that conversation? I was going to get to them. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Obviously, the Nuggets are incredible. It goes without saying. Yeah, just want to just want to make sure that they're they're properly represented they on this are, podcast um, taking place in Denver, Colorado. They are going <laughs> to be fully represented in just a moment. Okay. Um, 
I think the Celtics really do take the cake with the regular season win total. I have them at 59 or 60 wins somewhere in that region. Wow. It's a high number, but you see guys like Jason Tatum, guys like uh, Jalen Brown, will just put the team on their back from time to time in the regular season. And there's eight minutes left in the fourth, and they just score 20 points. And they're going to make games happen. They're going to make wins happen. More than most. Now you get a you also got a guy like Drew Holiday in there and Kristaps Porzingis and Derek White is still there. Derek White somehow left off the top 100 for ESPN. That was ridiculous. Was, of course it was. <laughs> like I actually got to interview Derek White kind of in a mm-hmm. similar venue as this. This is a it was kind of a, a full circle moment for sure, but uh no, it's a it's an interesting it's an interesting factor. I'm surprised that I'm surprised that I, so I think the Celtics will probably do it. I'm not sure about the Bucks. I'm not sure about the Nuggets. Some of those teams, they're not going to take the regular season as seriously. Uh, but some exactly. of them will. Like, uh, there's, this, I don't know. There's a little bit of logic to that. Because if the Celtics can guarantee themselves the one seed, then they have home court advantage. Yeah. They get to play four games at home against the Bucks, And that's probably something they really want to fight for. The Nuggets don't care. <laughs> they will walk anywhere and win. And we saw that happen last season. The Nuggets had already locked up the first seed in the West, but Jokic and Murray kind of took the last 17 or 18 games of the regular season off. They yeah. weren't really playing, <laughs> weren't really trying. And you could see that kind of thing happen near the top for the Bucks. You could see it happening for the Nuggets, for the Suns, even. I don't see that happening for the Celtics. I don't see them taking their foot off the gas because they want to guarantee that they're first. Yeah, I can see it. And like they were the leading team in the standings last year. Actually, or were the, were the bucks, the leading team that's I actually don't remember. It was one of those two, like they're, they're fighting for it for sure. But it, it is interesting to, is interesting to talk about. Interesting to think about. Um, if you had to pick one of those teams to win the finals, who would you pick? It's the Nuggets. Okay. It is the Nuggets as a repeat. And I don't have any any fun, interesting stats about repeat. Ross, Ross, by the way, loves to bring the stats. Like, that's one oh, thing that, like, with our conversations, Ross loves to look at stat news for sure. Like, that's that's one of your favorite sites during the, during the MVP race hunting for sure. <laughs> you remember that one from yeah. a couple years ago. Uh, a couple? Oh, my God. No, you did it last year. <laughs> You definitely did it last oh, year. You, you know the set I'm talking about, of course. Uh, which uh, one? Oh, yeah. That would be the... So, actually, that's this is a funny way to debut this, actually. <laughs> so, there was a lot of question marks on NBA tw- on Nuggets Twitter as to who came up with the 2000-1500 stat. I know that there are other people that claim it. I was the one who publicized it, but the person that brought it to me was this dude. It was this dude right here. He made sure to let me know that, like, right before the end of the season, that Jokic should very close to achieving 2,000, 1,500 points, rebounds, assists. And the fact that he did that in that, I think, second to last game of the season, I think that won him that MVP. And they actually, like, they celebrated it. And the Nuggets tagged me on Twitter. You remember that? They did celebrate <laughs> it when it happened. You got the credit from all the major platforms when they debuted their stat, I, except for maybe ESPN. I, I made sure. I made sure to <laughs> share on the podcast that it came from you. I just want to make make that. Oh clear. no, I, I knew yeah, that. Yeah. I knew that. But <laughs> I'm not that selfish. As it's a it's always fun going and looking through. It can be Stat Muse or or whatever other directory you're interested in, but. Looking through numbers is is just interesting, and it helps you see the game in a different light. Tell the world what you do for uh, what you did for school. I was an astrophysics major at okay. UCLA. Tell them what you did for fun in elementary school and middle school and high school. <laughs> uh, mostly math competitions. Yeah, <laughs> this is who I grew up with, and and like there's a reason for that. There's a reason why I am the way that I am. It's because. We shared a roof together, uh, but no, it was very funny. And uh, so it's one of the reasons why I'm so analytical. Like if I'm like in a seven on the analytical spectrum, Ross is a 10. Like it's very clearly Ross is a 10. Um, but we, we the have the first time anybody's ever said that. You're a, you're, <laughs> Ross is a 10. Yeah. Thank you. 
hey, I'm your, I'm your, I'm your blood here. Come on. <laughs> like, uh, any, any, any things that are negatively said about you, it means it's in part negatively said to me. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> um, who's going to win? You said the Nuggets win the finals. I said the Nuggets win the finals. Give me, give me your, your top two reasons why. Well, as I was sort of getting into, I didn't really have a statistical, an interesting fact, but the Nuggets are really good. They have the best player in the world, and we've seen a lot of interesting development from Nuggets players in the past four or five seasons, Yeah, specifically in the past year or two. Obviously, we lost a couple of really big, important pieces to our team, most notably Bruce Brown. And Brown was incredible. He was pivotal to that finals run. We would not have won the finals without Bruce Brown. He's gone now. Jeff Green is also gone now. And he was a, an instrumental piece in being a veteran and a leader in the locker room. We still have DeAndre Jordan. We still have, obviously, Jokic really fostering that Reggie Jackson. Yeah. Fostering that camaraderie among the, among the locker room. I don't see our skill guys losing to anybody. Jokic is absolutely incredible the way he plays with Jamal they can put up gaudy amounts of points on any given night and as we saw Aaron Gordon is good enough by himself to essentially shut down the best player on the next best team so that Sun series we were okay with giving Devin Booker 80% field goal efficiency because he's just gonna do that yeah and that was okay because even if he scores 50 if he doesn't have a team that can sort of bolster that 50 points, they're not going to get to a point where they can beat the Nuggets. So Gordon can take out someone like Durant, someone like LeBron, potentially someone like Giannis in the finals. What a fascinating matchup, by the way. Like, that's that's the ultimate challenge for, for AG. But I think he's up to it. I think, I think he can do it. I think he is. Yeah. And we're going to see some really interesting action in – a Nuggets Bucks finals, and I do have the Nuggets winning in seven. Nuggets in seven over the Bucks, man. Why do you have to steal all my bars? Why you gotta steal all my lines, bro? That's uh, was that uh, also your thinking? That was also my thinking, and yeah, it's no, it's it's fine. Like I mean, it's it's a good pick, and I, I put out today when when Giannis signed the extension that there is a there's a strong potential for. Nuggets Bucks to be a finals rivalry, kind of in the way that Warriors Cavs has been like during the the 2010s, or it's uh, like Lakers Celtics is is one that's very popular. Um, it's hard to really pinpoint some others throughout throughout history, but the, it's like Lakers Celtics and Cavs Warriors are the two that I think about. Um, and I think that there's a reason to believe, like you could have Jokic and Giannis or Jokic versus Giannis and Dame versus Murray and like have some awesome peripheral like battles between like Chris Middleton and Aaron Gordon or Michael Porter and Brooke Lopez and guys like that. Like just the quality of talent on both of those teams is very similar in my opinion. It, it absolutely is. There's going to be some interesting matchups deep into the bench. A lot of interesting coaching decisions that talk about minutes, talk about lineups and schemes figuring out what really does make sense in comparing these two teams. Yeah. And I think really what the difference is going to be, you asked for a second reason why the Nuggets are going to win the finals. Michael Porter is going to make more than one three pointer. <laughs> yeah. It and was, that's uh, going to be the nail in the coffin. It was tough. Place. It was definitely a tough uh, finals for Michael Porter, but he, I mean, he's, he's too good of a shooter. He'll bounce back. And like, I mean, the, the Heat actually had a really good personnel to go up against Mike and get under his shooting space. I don't think the Bucks do. Like they, they got Chris Middleton and like he's a little bit slower on the perimeter. He's, he's probably not the right guy to be able to chase around a guy like Mike. But hey, who knows? Maybe that's maybe that changes. But uh, I think there's a, certainly an argument for the Celtics. I think there's certainly an argument for the Suns. I think there's even an argument for the Lakers, uh, despite the fact that I'm not like. Not like super high on the Lakers, but I, I do think that oh, Ross is, <laughs> for those listening on the audio version, Ross just did a sweeping uh, mannerism, which is hilarious, by the way. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, I, th- I think you could be, you could make cases for all those teams. 
I don't think you could really make a case for that many more than that. It would be hard to. Yeah. And it's always possible we see a heroic kind of run, like what we saw last year with Jimmy Butler putting Miami on his back and single-handedly beating what felt like everybody. Yeah. So maybe. Maybe there's I guess, some... I guess I should loop in the heat in this conversation, just, well, just for posterity. <laughs> don't get ahead of yourself. Uh, I don't think there's another team that can compete with any of those five, if I give you the Lakers, talent-wise. It's the Celtics, the Bucks, the Suns, the Nuggets, and maybe the Lakers. But there could always be a dark horse, some heroic kind of run. It could be Donovan Mitchell and the Cavs. It could be Luka and the Mavericks. It could be Shea and the Thunder. Who knows? Anything is possible, and we shouldn't count anybody out, but really it's those four or five teams that are in the conversation. Yeah, and it's important to kind of expand beyond just like the Nuggets, the Bucks, and the Celtics, although, although I do think those are clearly the three favorites. And there was a GM survey done a week or two ago that basically had um, 27 of the 30 votes were for either the the Nuggets, the Bucks, or the Celtics. And that feels right. It feels like it's a 90% chance it'll be one of those teams. And it's just going to have to be like, hey, it, it, maybe the, the Suns kind of break into that. But I think the Clippers were also a team that was listed in that survey for some reason. That's uh, Yeah, the Clippers did show up on the GM survey. And that's really an interesting choice. Yeah, we it's all, a horrible choice. It is a horrible <laughs> it's choice. It's a horrible choice. Like, we can we can on, respect man. Kawhi to some length, but they don't have the depth, and I don't know if they have the talent anymore to really to really compete with either the Nuggets or the Suns coming out of the West. We'll see what happens. Um, but the good news is that the season is coming very shortly. Uh, why don't we wrap up here with some fun takes? Let's uh, let's enjoy for a little bit. We've been going for about thirty minutes or so. Let's wrap up with some fun takes so we could just have some some fun to to close out this conversation. Um, you said you had one that you wanted to get off your chest, but I could start if you'd prefer. Yeah, you can start. Okay. You can start. I, I will start. I'll, I'll kind of get us primed for, for this conversation. I am going to say that the T-Wolves, and I said this on uh, the preview podcast with them, I think the T-Wolves upset whoever they play in the first round, except the Nuggets. Really? Yes. You think that includes the Suns? That includes the Suns. That includes, if it's the Warriors, it's the Warriors. If it's the Lakers, it's the Lakers. If it's the Kings or the Grizzlies, they'll be both of those teams. I think that the T-Wolves are really good. I think they're really, really good. And they just signed uh, Jaden McDaniels to that extension today. Uh, I think they look... They were the team that gave Denver the the most trouble. That was the hardest playoff series. Yeah, it really was. And Jokic went 8 of 29 in one of the games yeah. where clearly like that like, he didn't have any trouble with anybody else. Like he didn't have any trouble with Bam. He didn't have any trouble with Anthony oh, no, Davis. No, like of course not. none of that. It was so it was the, the dual bigs was certainly an interesting take mm-hmm. and it's the only way to guard him, I think. Right. And well, would you look at that when you guard Jokic with two of your best players on the court? He'll find somebody else, <laughs> right? And if he doesn't find somebody else, Jamal will. So anyway, they're really good. Tangenting off of the Nuggets again, uh, Anthony Edwards is incredible. He's really, really good and going to be a lot of fun to watch for the next few years, if not longer. Here's a good question to ask for you as, as somebody who like people aren't super familiar with. Who who do you have fun enjoying like and enjoy watching in the NBA outside of Jokic and the Nuggets? Like which player, which team are, are you like most drawn to when you're when you're actually perusing around the NBA? That's definitely a really interesting question. And frankly, I don't think about it all that much because I like watching basketball tangentially during the season, but I'm mostly watching the Nuggets games. If I had to pick one, it might be SGA. Yeah. It might be Luca, uh, and it might be Anthony Edwards. They're they're all just really talented young players who are going to make a name for themselves. Obviously, Luca has already, and the other yeah. two are working their way into that argument. It's just a lot of fun to watch, and good sports is fun. Yeah, it's it's way more enjoyable in general than 
do you prefer do you prefer seeing like dynasties at work and seeing the best of the best go or do you prefer like the competitive matchups where the parody is is as as much as it has been lately it's kind of a double-edged sword and some of each can be interesting yeah as much as everybody hates tom brady patriots were incredible for a decade and a half (laughs) they were without question the best team year in year out yeah and there's there's a lot of respect that goes into that when you have a team that can be so good for so long. And so obviously the two that come to mind in the last couple of decades in the NBA are the Warriors and any team LeBron James has played for. Yeah. Those are the two dynasties that have existed. And those are a lot of fun to watch in their own right, but they get too much publicity. That's really the issue. Part of it is, you know, the large market teams, but also like fans, like a lot of fans just do love watching the winners. Like that's, and that's, that's one of the, the reasons it's like you're, you're especially one of the reasons why people were latching onto the Lakers even last year when the Nuggets were sweeping them in the conference finals was because they have won so often. The Lakers have won. They've, they've, they are the consistent winner and LeBron is a consistent winner. And it was so weird for people to watch the other end of that spectrum where a team just gave it to them. So like, rooting for the Lakers is like rooting for Alabama, the Crimson Tide. Yeah. Or it's like rooting for the Yankees. <laughs> or, or the Cowboys. Well, they have been for a long time. America's team is, uh, is a stretch there for sure. <laughs> but you can, you know, you can name teams that have been historically great. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the fandom is specifically because they have been great and they're fun to watch. And you know, if you become a fan of one of those franchises like the Yankees, you're not going to be disappointed. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Or or if that disappointment is there, it will be short lived because you're the Yankees or the Lakers or one of these teams. Right. Yeah. And if you choose to be a fan of a more small market team, someone a little bit less proven, we'll use the Thunder or the Mavericks as an example. You can use the Nuggets as an example. It's possible that you become disappointed and you run through those long bouts of just unfortunate seasons, lost to injuries, lost to bad coaching or bad management or whatever, you know, whatever happens. A little bit of time in the spotlight, though, is really it's worth the wait. It's worth the pain. It's one of the reasons why I started this show, if I'm being honest, because national coverage too often glosses over the smaller markets for ratings purposes, for clicks purposes. And to be clear, I would love for this podcast to be popular. I'd love to get clicks. Like everybody knows that. Like it's just, that's, that's part of the business that you just kind of have to operate with. But if I could choose between doing great coverage of all the teams and making sure that everybody felt well represented and selling my soul for the clicks I actually had that choice when starting this podcast. I just decided let's let's not sell the soul. Let's actually do something that's going to be valuable. And I think that's a it's a good perspective to have, and and one that you probably have as a as a Nuggets fan, and, and one that you definitely have, have learned from since the drafting of Emmanuel Mudiay in 2015. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> it's it's difficult to feel disrespected as a fan. And as, as part of a fandom. Yeah. And when you are part of a small market team or just not the spotlight, it can be really frustrating at times. And, you know, I've, I've grown up as a Pac-12 fan, and that certainly rears its ugly head in terms of college football. Sure. Is, oh, we'll just rank the SEC teams again. And <laughs> that kind of thing happens. I, I could throw a subtle dig at Oklahoma, too. That kind of thing happens, and as a small market team, you feel disrespected because you aren't part of the rankings. You aren't part of the spotlight. And hopefully this this national podcast gives all of those fan bases, every one of them, even the big market teams, a little bit of time just to be themselves, to enjoy, to talk about what's good, what's bad, where are we looking forward, you know, kind of what are we looking up to. You've had enough time to think about your bold, your bold takes, your bold uh, predictions here, or like your bold feelings about about the NBA. What are your What are you thinking now? Hot takes. Um, you are under the impression that the Lakers are going to be really good this year. 
when I say really good, I have them predicted as the third seed in the West. Good enough. Kind of in that, like, but they're in still that, they're in that group of teams from like third to seventh that like you could see them operating in any order. I just, I'm one of the few people I feel like that's actually picking the Lakers to be third. Sure. Uh, I'm under the impression that the Lakers are old. <laughs> now, they have, they have a bunch of great young talent, admittedly. Austin Reeves is going to become a great NBA player. Somebody, you know, even somebody like Rui Hachimura might become really good and, and a great gadget, great role player. LeBron is getting up there. And th- obviously there's a lot of stats that have come out and said they're going to score or this is how many points you've scored in your age. Was it 38? Yeah. Season. And expecting LeBron to blow those numbers away. But at some point your body starts to give in. And we've seen that with Anthony Davis we haven't really seen it with LeBron, but he definitely looked tired in that Western Conference Finals. And I think the Lakers are going to kind of collapse. And they might still make the playoffs, might still make the play-in, but I don't think they're going to be a team to contend with. Yeah, there's there's definitely a feeling of it has to be on LeBron and AD in order to make it work. And I guess I'm just under the impression that they've got one more year in them as opposed to that the, the carpet's going to be thrown out from under them at the end of the season, like you seem to think. Um, And that's fine. It's completely fair. It's completely understandable. Uh, But it is like, I think they'll be able to get through the regular season because they have D'Angelo Russell, Austin Reeves, and some other kind of younger, more athletic guys that can score a little bit. Rui Hachimura is a good example of that too. Like just young guys that can help them get through the year. Do you have any other bold takes or do you want me to... uh, to throw one at you. Yeah, hey, you can you can have a turn. We'll okay, well we'll go back and come forth. back once. Okay, um, so I had Minnesota upsetting somebody. I think that. Who? I think that Zion gets traded at the deadline. That could certainly be interesting. Yeah, though I don't necessarily see that as a as a hot take or as a surprise. Well, I mean, he's, if he's their best player, do you think he's their best player? Of course. Yeah, I think I think he's he is a guy who you want to build your franchise around. They just haven't done that well enough. I think that they're going to get to that point where whether it's the fit with Ingram and, and CJ McCollum and guys like that, they've got Trey Murphy coming back. They've got some other young guys, but they've also got some like draft capital and and things like that, that they could then turn into something better. I think that Zion, if you trade him for, like he's the trade before the trade, in my opinion. And like they, they get good assets and good picks out of Zion and then flip those for the next available star. Whether it's somebody like, like let's say I'm wrong about the the T wolves, Carl Anthony towns as a guy that could go there. Or Joel Embiid or somebody like that. Like that there it would make a lot of sense in my opinion. But I mean, who knows? Maybe uh I just I just think that Zion is he's so talented, but there's still so much wrong with New Orleans right now. That's definitely true. I think it's a completely reasonable opinion. And Zion is one of those players that he is incredibly talented. He's incredibly high output. When he's on the floor. Yeah. And we've seen him, unfortunately, go down with a plethora of different injuries over the course of his, I believe, four seasons now. Zion was one of those guys who's the prospect. He was the guy. Now it's Wemby. Then it was Zion. And pretty sure Zion was the guy since James. Yeah. And he hasn't turned out as such. He's been very productive on the court. He's been very not on the court. And if the Pelicans were able to trade and get a lot of value for him, it absolutely might be time. Do you have one more for me or should we get out of here? I'll just, I'll just throw it in. Um, Jamal Murray is going to be an all-star this season. It's going to be the first time Nikola Jokic has played with an all-star wow. in his career. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and by the end of the season, people are going to recognize Jamal Murray as one of the two or three best point guards in the league. They don't currently do that. There's a lot of disrespect towards Jamal, specifically because of his regular season output. But now that people have actually seen what he's capable of in the playoffs, again, (laughs) 
they're going to start to recognize just how talented this kid is. And he's a 26 year old man. He's older than you. I know, but yeah. <laughs> I, I still remember back, you know, back in 2017 or whatever, when it was, we're drafting him and he's, yeah. and he's young and he's still on his way. And now he's there. Now he is absolutely an incredible basketball player and a lot of fun to watch. So we might even see some people ranking him above Steph by the end of the season in terms of the Ooh. point guard list. Man, I don't think I could get there, dude. But like, that's wild. Um, There's my take for you. That's okay. That's bold take to be clear. That that's a that's a good one. That's a good one to end on to. Um, bro, hey, thank you for uh, thank you for hopping on with me. This Absolutely, was, this was fun. And I know that, I mean, probably we've never done anything like this before. I've never done anything like this before. So hopefully it's well well received. Hopefully people like it. And uh, we will just have to see where this goes. So thank you for doing this. And that'll do it for this episode of The Alley Oop, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm going to be chatting with somebody else on Friday. And probably not in person, I don't think. But uh, hopefully we have another conversation lined up for you. And maybe some reactions to opening night and things like that. Thank you so much for hopping on, dude. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Had a nice time.